Hello, hello, we are live. It's Wednesday, it's night time with Nelly. How are we? How are we all doing? Where are you watching me from? Give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Let me know where you're watching your Auntie Nelly from. Let me know what you're on with. What's the weather like? What you're drinking? What you're on with? Comment on this live. Let me know that you're live with me. I am here live in the bedroom in Hasland and Rosendale, Lancashire. It's absolutely pissing it down. Okay, so the first confession of Nighttime with Nelly. I could no longer embrace the grey. So I have gone back to my... What would have been my natural colour before I went grey in my 20s. So I am back to being a brunette. I was blonde for a little bit and it was such fun. But I'm back to what I feel most comfortable with and that is a brunette. I was ever so lucky to get in with the hairdresser on Monday. And I was beyond excited. I was counting down the sleeps. And um, I was up really early Monday as if I were going to school for like, you know, when you go back to school for the first time after your holidays. Yeah, I'm well impressed with it. I am so delighted to be back to a lovely chocolate brown. When I sat down in her dressing chair, she went, right, what we're we doing? And you all saw the state of my hair and I went, can you just like put me back to brown? And she went, yeah, of course I can. She went, look, we all loved you blonde. She went, but you're a brunette. And I went, I know. I know I am. And, you know, it's fine. Lots of people were saying, you paid a fortune to go that light. And yeah, I did. But I don't have any vices or anything. I don't have that much of a fucking good time in my life. So yeah, I paid a bit of money on going blonde. But I'm back to brunette and I'm loving it. So how have we all been? Because it's been a while since I've come live and done Nighttime with Nelly. If you follow me on Instagram... Um, Antonella Uncensored, you'll see my story this evening. I've been ever so nervous um, and a little bit apprehensive about coming live tonight because I haven't been live for such a long time. Um, and I was saying to my friends and family, I was like, oh God, I've got to go live tonight. It's night time and Ellie and I'm shitting it. And they're like, why? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I've got funny feeling. I'm a bit excited but I'm also a bit nervous but why and I'm like I don't know and they're like you'd be absolutely fine and then I was like yeah yeah I will I'll be absolutely fine I'll say I have flower pots and before I know it it'll be fine I opened up a message not after long not long after I talked myself into coming live for night time and Ellie I opened up a message and then the message said Oh, for fuck's sake, it's not Nightmare with Nelly, is it? Why don't you fuck off? Nobody wants to see Nightmare with Nelly. We haven't missed you and we don't want you back. So, let's hope that tonight's Nighttime with Nelly is not a nightmare. Okay. Um, Lots and lots and lots of thank yous here to every single one of you that sent me get well wishes whilst I was in hospital. Um, I'm home now and I'm recovering. And I'm feeling much, much better. So I'm still taking it easy. And I'm still letting everybody run round after me and pamper me. Uh, why not? Fucking milking it. That's what I do. Uh, but yeah, I'm much, much better. Um, if you don't know that I've been in hospital, you don't know anything what's been going on, then you're not following me on Instagram because I'm like fucking Adrian Mall on that there Instagram. I tell you everything. Um, yeah, it's like a diary. So in the morning, they'll say good morning. Then I'll tell you what I'm doing. Then it's like good afternoon. Then it's like what you're on for your tea. Then it's like good night. So if you're not following me on Instagram, then you're missing out on a day in the life of your Auntie Nelly. So there we go. So yes, I'm back and it's nighttime in Nelly and I've accrued some nighttime in Nelly's. No idea what I'm going to read before you read them. So if you're a new flower pot or you're new to the show, then let me tell you. I read out a dear Auntie Nelly. And then I give a response to the dear Auntie Nelly and it's an off the cuff answer. I've no idea what I'm going to open, whether they're made up, they've been sent in for a laugh or the real problems. I've no idea until I read them. So we all find out together. There will be strong language throughout and there will be talk of a sexual nature. So if that's not your bag, OK, and you just like me to do a few reviews now and again, but you're not interested in the agony outside or you don't like the strong language, or the sexual uh, talk, then off you fuck now, okay? Will not take offence, but if you do like this, give me a like, give me a love, give me
can you share and let me know where you're watching me from? Someone just said they're watching from Nova Scotia. <sighs> that's well far away, isn't it? I'm not very good at geography, but I think that's like well far away. So how have we all been, my gorgeous little flower pots? Have we all been okay? How was the hairdressers on Monday, says Kayla? Well, it was a little bit different because you weren't allowed coffee. And usually when I got hairdressers, I have like at least five espressos. But everything else was okay. And can I just say, my, my hairdresser, Spectrum One, the gorgeous Katie Grimshaw, she's just been put up for um, an award. And she fucking deserves to win that because she's worked her ass off to get that salon in that nick safe and healthy uh, for us all. So, yeah, God bless them. <clears throat> so, without further ado, should you want to feature on a Nighttime with Nelly, then write into the page with Nighttime with Nelly. I can see Vanessa Worthington watching. Hi, Vanessa. Um, yeah, write into Nighttime with Nelly or write in for Sunday service. Preferably night at night time in Ellie's are usually relationship and sexual problems. Sunday service can be a bit of everything, such as like, I can't stand my next door neighbour and if he fucking screws any more shells up on a Sunday morning at seven o'clock, I'm going to twat him. And then you get my honest advice as to what you should do. So, without further ado, shall we get going? I think we should. I know we're all still kind of in lockdown and lockdown is easing slightly. Um, and whatever that may be for people, please be kind and please respect other people as well. Let let other people do, um, you know, what they need to do and you do what you need to do and don't comment and don't judge. A lot of people were like, fucking people going out to the fucking pub, it's too early, it's ridiculous. If you don't want to go to the pub, you don't need to go to the fucking pub, do you? Stop at home, let people go and do what they want to fucking do. You don't have to do it, nobody's asking you to do it. And I can understand all the young ones who wanted to go out for a drink when the pub's open because they've been stuck in lockdown with the mums and dads. They may not live on their own and have the access of having a little bit of a house party. They might want to go out and see the pals. Do you know what I mean? So let them do them and you just do you. So that's how I'm starting with my advice about lockdown. I'm as nervous as you all. We're all nervous about what the new normal is going to be. And um, as long as we stay safe and we respect each other and respect each other's boundaries, it's going to be okay. Okie dokie. Dear Auntie Nelly, I am a 25-year-old male. And I've been with my girlfriend for around eight years now. We have two beautiful children together and everything is good apart from the bedroom department. Our sex life is great, but very, but great, very frequent, but sometimes I just can't come. My girlfriend comes a lot. For anybody who's watching this and they don't know what come means, it means ejaculate, orgasm, okay? So I can't just come, but she comes a lot. I just keep going and going until I'm absolutely fucked. And she's fucked. Can you give me some advice, please? Okay. I think the fact that she's coming loads is brilliant. Thumbs up. Who doesn't like to come loads? Uh, put your hand up. My hand's up. The fact that you can't come as often as her. We don't always have to ejaculate or orgasm. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a big fucking firework finale. Sex and uh, making love and being intimate and caressing each other and kissing each other and just stroking can be just as much fun and it can be just as pleasurable so it's not about she comes more than me so it's like when you're having your tea and saying he's had seven chips and i've only had five it's not a competition as long as you're both feeling sexually satisfied it doesn't matter. And I don't think you should be having sex that makes you both absolutely fucked at the end of it. You should feel fucked like you've had a right good fucking, but you shouldn't feel so fucked at the end of it that like fucking hell, it's absolutely not, not you on your ass, if you will. So don't, my advice to you would be enjoy your sex, have your frequent sex, enjoy your sex life while you can. And don't count the orgasms. It doesn't matter if she's had six and you've only had three. It doesn't matter. But what I will say is, you know, if you're ever single and I'm no longer engaged and you can make a girl come that many times a night, knock on your Auntie Nelly's door. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> 
Dear Auntie Nelly, I found messages on my fiancé's Facebook with him joking about his female friend fingering herself. <laughs> I love a bit of fingering. I haven't said fingering for ages, actually. That is my fingering finger, though, and that's the finger that you'll see me on most reviews applying concealers or eyeshadow. Fingering finger, because it's a lot lighter <clears throat> than your actual fingering finger. Right. So, here we go. I wasn't looking through his phone. Well, how did you find a message then about a girl going on about fingering herself? You weren't looking. You fucking psychic. We've got set it, set it peg here. <coughs> All right. He'd logged into my Facebook on my tablet and forgot to log out and left the messages screen open. Oh, that old fucking chestnut. <coughs> I saw the word pussy, so I continued to read. Oh, she might have been telling him about a little cat that's been, like, you know, struggling not to go out in lockdown. He told me it's a joke and nothing more, but to me it was too graphic and I feel incredibly uncomfortable and can't shake the idea that he was sexting with her instead of it being a joke as he claims. Honestly, I feel like he's cheated and don't think I can go on with the wedding. Oh, fucking hell, supposed to get married. If this is what he jokes about, then what will he be hiding? Thank you. Now, when we actually go through people's tablets, iPads, laptops, Macs, iPhones, Samsungs, whatever it may be that has messages from other people, we have to think, why am I doing this, number one? Why? Why can he not leave his laptop open with personal emails, personal messages that haven't got your bastard name on them? Without you, without you, then going, oh, what's that? And homing in. Because that's what you've done. Good evening, Keel and Justice. Good evening, my angel. Hope you're okay. Um, why can't you just watch, watch your own stuff? Mind your business. Because sometimes when we go through our partners, phones, wives, husbands, whatever it is, right? We may see something we don't like. And it may just be a bit of fucking banter in office like, what, yon wee flower? Oh, I'm just fingering myself. Oh, well, I'm having a sausage roll. It might just be a bit of banter. You've already fallen in love with this man. You've already let him put a fucking ring on it. You've already probably let him smash your back doors in. You're going to get down that fucking aisle and all of a sudden you've seen the word pussy and she's telling him that she's fingering herself. And all of a sudden, you've created this big fucking drama thriller blockbuster that probably doesn't exist. Because you're probably feeling a little bit insecure, probably just because things haven't just been quite tickety-boo in the bedroom, or you're frightened that he might have said, did you do that fingering after work that I told you to do? What we do as females, and please, any feminist out there, stop me if you want, but... We do make things into a right big fucking scenario. When I worked in an office many years ago, lads had come in on a Monday morning, all youngins, and I'd say, do you have a good weekend? Yeah, Auntie Nelly, I did, yeah. Get off with any girls. Yeah, did you finger her? Uh, and I'll say, did your fucking finger come out green? Because if it did, I hope you fucking didn't bother taking her home. Eh? You know, it might just be a bit of office banter. So sit him down at that kitchen table. Woohoo! The first couple of the evening to be sat down at the kitchen table. Hashtag kitchen table. Off you fuck at the kitchen table and say, look, I weren't looking through your messages, but it made me feel really uncomfortable. Why are you talking about fingering with somebody you work with? Why does she feel comfortable in telling you that she's fingering herself? She probably fucking weren't. I mean, fucking hell fire. How many times have we done sex fucking chat shite on a phone and they've gone, oh, what you're wearing? And you've gone, oh, I'm wearing my um, crotchless panties and people bra. And you sat there in a fucking nighty, inside out, back to front with ketchup down it. Do you know what I mean? So, it's a bit of banter. He's probably said something and she said, oh, yeah, fuck off, I'm going fingering myself. I wouldn't look too much into it, but I certainly would have the straight up conversation of, I don't like this and it's made me feel really uncomfortable. And then there'll be an explanation. But rather than thinking, that's it, I'm sending my fucking wedding dress back, I'm cancelling flowers, cars aren't coming, there's no wedding... Oh, because some fucking idiot sends a message about fucking fingering herself. If she had a fella, if she had your fella, she wouldn't be fucking fingering herself, would she? 
Well, she would, actually, because we do, don't we? Don't matter how good sex is. It don't matter how much fucking sex you get. You still like a bit of a fucking fish finger now and again. I mean, I've been doing a lot of kit catting lately. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Dear Auntie Nelly. Oh, by the way, if you're a new flower pot, this is literally how night time with Nelly goes. So if it's not your bag, off your fuck now, flower. Hashtag, bye Felicia. Hello, dear Nelly. Hello, dear anonymous flower pot. Need your advice on how to act when I'm really into a guy. I've had a one night stand with after getting drunk at a friend's party. I'm a girl. I'm 23 and we've known each other for a year. He asked me to do him a blow job. For anybody who doesn't quite know what a blow job is, it's a fellatio, the act of fellatio. The act where a lady may drop to her knees and then give a special kiss to the man's genitalia. When that's over with, you usually hear Auntie Nelly saying, can you get me back up, please? So Auntie Nelly doesn't usually perform fellatio on her knees because she can't fucking get back up, okay? So she's gone to this party and she's performed fellatio on a young gentleman. <clears throat> oh, no, she didn't actually. She goes on to say, I declined and went home early. Oh, Christ, it morning, even though it wasn't that far, I still felt very humiliated that he didn't even walk me home. But I can't stop thinking about him. I really want to see him again, even though he treats me like shit. What do I do? Well, don't be dropping to your fucking knees. There's no wrong with saying to a lad when a lad says, oh, he sucked me dick, you saying. No, nothing wrong with that because we never, ever, ever do anything that we don't want to, ever, okay? And whether that's in the middle of sex, if you think I'm not liking this and you say, stop, get off, they have to get up. Otherwise, it's not what we call consensual. So the fact that you like this lad, you've gone to a party, you're a bit of a young girl, you've had a few drinks, you've got off with him and then he's gone, will you give me a blowjob? And you've gone, no, you fucked off home. Why were you expecting him to walk you home? Had he took you to the party? Were you on an actual date? Or did you just think you were just going to like get off with him but hold his hand? What he probably did was think, I really want my, my dick sucking, she's not going to do it. So she's gone home and I'll stop around and see some fucker else. Well, doesn't mean you don't have to like the lad. Doesn't mean to say we can't champion the lad for asking or trying. Do you know what I mean? God loves the fucking trier. Stick by your guns. He'll respect the fact that you didn't suck his dick on a first date at a party when you met him 30 minutes ago at fucking bathroom. He'll respect that. I mean, come on, be honest. Do you know what I mean? If she goes down so easily in 30 minutes, who else has she gone down easier on in 30 minutes? Do you know what I mean? And that's not boyfriend and girlfriend material. I mean, I've had sex with people within fucking seconds. But that's only because I weren't right asked about them and I didn't want to see them again. Do you know what I mean? If you want, I always say, if you're going out on a date with somebody, you right like them, and I mean right like them, don't let them in your knickers on first night because what else is there to come back for? Do you know what I mean? Save it. Do a little bit of a dating rule. But then there are people out there who fucked up first night, we at first hour and they're married now. Do you know what I mean? So don't listen to me. I mean, what do I fucking know? I only have an Agony Ant cha uh, channel and I only have my own Agony Ant column in chat and I only do a Sunday service. But I mean, once again, like I say, and um, I'll just answer, what is a Kit Kat? A Kit Kat is four fucking fingers. Ooh! So, yeah, um, yeah, just don't let lads treat you like shit is my advice to you. Don't be giving blowjobs if you don't want to because they're not going to like you more just because you have. Um, and just see how it goes. And only drop to your knees if you've lost your keys. <clears throat> Nighttime with Nelly. Dear Auntie Nelly, please read on Nighttime with Nelly. Oh, I've been dating a guy, nothing too serious. But feelings are growing. Well, they were till last week because he sent me a video and it's a well cheeky one. Oh, right. I thought, what was he going to turn me on? Um, well, put me right off. Sometimes anonymous flower pots will type in to dear Auntie Nelly and I can't make fucking Edna Taylor what the fucking type in because I think they're that excited to type it. They're not, it's it right keys. The video was of him putting a pen down his pee hole of his cock and then he wanked it out. 
Okay, I know he didn't harm an animal or a child. No, that's good. That's a start. That's a step in the right direction. If we're not harming animals or children, you're all right by me. But he's put a pen down his cock hole and wanked it out. Am I odd for not thinking it was sexy? Who would find that sexy? Or am I odd? He wants to see me at the weekend. I don't know which fucking weekend flower because I've not been here for months. But I don't think I can look at him again. Please advise me. Okay, so what what's happening here is he's done a sexy video of himself having a wank. And his way to have a nice wank, he thought, oh, I'll just flower this up a bit. And he stuck a pen down his cock. And while he's wanked, it's come out and he's had a right nice time. Maybe that's something he needs to do on his own. I mean, there's lots of things we can do on our own. I mean, there's lots of things I do on my own, such as like eating a teller spread out at jar with a spoon under stairs. Um, anyway, it's not about me, is it? It's not overeating class, is it? It's not therapy for overeaters. Um, so he sent you a video and you thought, that's not my bag, I don't find that sexy. So you tell him, so you just say, God, first thing I'd do is I wouldn't go, that's a bit odd, or is it not odd? Is it me that's odd? I won't question it. The first thing I'd have said is, fucking hell, fire, does that not hurt? Lads don't usually want to go for a fucking STD because they don't want anything to go down the fucking knob. Not STD, an STD test. But he might be into kinky stuff. And ask him that, say, does it not hurt? And if he says, no, actually, I right, like it, say, fucking hell, fire, it's not my bag, that. What else are you into? You sound a bit kinky for me. Get to know him. And I think it's so important that for all couples, whether they're shoving fucking pen things down the fucking dick or they're wearing big nappies and shitting themselves while wanking or throwing shit in your face or wanting you to fucking piss on them, it's important to find out what turns you on because their turn on and your turn on could be two fucking different universes and it's never going to marry up in the bedroom and then you're not going to be sexually satisfied. So it's important to find out that um he's not kinky or he is kinky or you know how you're gonna get on in the bedroom i mean shoving a fucking pen down your bell end christ on a bike i don't know what fucking bick i'd have to fucking say about that oh so that's my advice sweetheart find out what his fucking kinks are and is it off the wall too much for you so listen I'm not the girl for you, but I wish you the best of luck. And I've just posted five fountain pens through your door. No hard feelings. <clears throat> Dear Nelly, okay, I have waited to get married and was bound to determine to never be divorced. I thought I got it correct. But he divorced me after two years. I was gutted. 21 years later, I am still single and I am now 50. The best years of my life behind me and I got to be officially a virgin again as I literally have not had any sort of sexual moments in 21 years. Fuck me, talk about fucking cobwebs. I think there's a question here. Lol, my point is, where am I going to be at peace with this? I just cannot get past this failure. I'm not attractive and putting on out of fuck me vibe so it's not like i'm turning down any offers how do i turn this round well number one stop thinking you're not attractive that's number one you have to stop thinking you're not attractive number two stop thinking you're a fucking failure people get married and people get divorced and then people get remarried and they get re-divorced doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you're a sucker for love. You're a sucker for romance and you believe in love. You're not a failure, sweetheart, just because your marriage didn't work. You've been on your own 21 years and that's probably because you think you're disgusting. You're probably not. You're probably absolutely lovely. And the fact is, if you continue to have that negative persona where I'm fat, I'm ugly, who the fuck's going to want to fuck me, upset me fucking rampant rabbit and I'm fucking sick of looking at that bastard face. No one's going to want you because they're going to find you really approach unapproachable. So you need to sort your shit out. Number one, you need to sort them fucking cobwebs out. Give them a good fucking dusting, darling. Get a bit of femme fresh up there. Sort yourself out. Get your hair done. Put something nice on that you feel good in. Get yourself out there. Get yourself on Tinder. Get yourself on Plenty of Fanny. Have a bit of a laugh and a 
joke with folk. I'm not saying go on a date, meet people and fuck them first night. I'm saying get out there a bit. Put yourself out there. Make the best of what you've got. I'm fucking 46 and believe me, I was super morbidly obese. I'm now obese. If I ever get to overweight, bingo. But if I don't, who gives a fuck? This is it. Okay. And if they don't like it, that's fine. But some fucker might. But if you're not putting yourself out there, how do we know? And no, they don't bastard knock on your door. Believe me, I've sat here many a time. I've even been up and down fucking back alley with bins and no fucker's been there to jump on me. They don't. You've got to go out there and put yourself out there. So you're not ugly. You're not a failure. You're absolutely wonderful. And the way you speak to yourself is going to knock your confidence and your self-esteem. So start being a little bit nicer to yourself. Speak to yourself in a way that you speak to others. And then people notice that you're a little bit more confident. You've got a little bit of a spring in your step. You've blown away the cobwebs. You're fem freshing. You're putting a bit of fucking mascara on, a bit of tutti. And somebody might just stop you down frozen food aisle and ask you what you're doing on a Thursday. You never know. And if they do ask you what you're doing on a Thursday, you can always tell them that you like a bit of fish on a Friday. <clears throat> Nighttime with Nelly message again. Dear Auntie Nelly, I am a new flower pot. Me and my partner are both 25. We met at work and I've been in a relationship for 18 months. I've been in many relationships and I was engaged with my ex Ext, while I am his first ever girlfriend. I'm gone a minute. What are we doing here? I have been in many relationships and I was almost engaged, but I am his first ever girlfriend. I live on my own in a rented house and would really like him to move in so we can save for a house. But he's a mummy's boy in capital letters and he's not ready for leaving his family all in the luxuries of a mother. He gets emotional at the idea of staying more than a few nights a week and he misses his mum and home. I love him, but I don't know if I'm going to have a future for him or if he's ever ready for leaving his mum. Years of my family trying to convince me not to waste my time is torture. So you've been together 18 months, you're both 25, so 18 months is not a long time really. So they say that you've got a bit together about four years before you start getting to know each other and you don't ever really get to know each other until you live together. So I don't know why you're rushing, why you're rushing, you're still only a quarter of a century old and you've only been together 18 months. And yeah, he might like the fact that his mum has his tea on table every Thursday, every Tuesday, likes cottage pie on a Friday, who the fuck knows? He might like the fact that his mum does his washing, his iron and his drying, you know, he might like all that. That doesn't make him a mummy's boy, that's just how it is. He comes and stops for you a couple of nights a week. He's just not ready. I'm not saying he's not that into you. He's just not ready to take that fucking leap into a committed relationship. Because you can be boyfriend and girlfriend and be committed and not cheat and be so happy in love. Don't have to live together. Fuck me. There's loads of people I know now who are married and don't live together. You don't have to go to that next step. But you do have to have the conversation of, look, I really want to live with somebody. I really want to start saving for a house. Doesn't stop you saving for a house. But he might say, yeah, it might be something we can do in the future. It just means he's not ready. It doesn't mean to say he doesn't want to go out with you or he doesn't need you or he doesn't want you or he's not happy. He's just not fucking ready. And that's okay. Because would you not rather have him moving in with you when he is ready rather than him moving in because he feels like he has to and then it all goes fucking tits up. No. Let him <coughs> do it at his own pace. But if you really, really, really feel that his pace is too slow for you and you're ready for the next step, then he's not the one for you, is he? Because he's not going at your pace. And then you'll have to find somebody else and start again. And But you need to be telling these people immediately, I want a really serious, committed relationship. Not on first date, put them off. Committed relationship where I want you to live with me and I want to save up for a house. 18 months in, he's only 25. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's fair to call him a mummy's boy, really. Um, I just think that he's just like, he's stopping a few nights a week, then he's going home, isn't he? 
You might like to go home and just get on his Xbox and have a right nice wank and knock the fucking lid off it without you. You know, there's lots of reasons why we're just not ready and why we like to be at home in our, you know, creature comfort. So I won't really, you know, go down the path of his mummy's boy. He might well be, but he's not ready to take the next step. So you've got to seriously think now, are you rushing? What are you rushing for? Why do you want to live together? Why do you want to buy a new house if you're in rented? Why can't you rent somewhere together and see how it fucking goes? Why can't he move in with you and pay off towards your bills and see if you can actually live together? Because until you do live together, you never really know somebody. So why don't you just do a bit of a suck it and see? Do you know what I mean? You might not stand the cunt after a fucking week. You might be thinking, pack your bags and fuck off to your mother's. <sighs> Dear Auntie Nelly, please can you help? I hope so. I hope so far it's not nightmare with Nelly and we're doing night time with Nelly, unlike what the trolls say. Hmm? Gotta love them, haven't you? Because no fucker else does. I've been with my partner nearly 20 years. He has a higher sex drive than me and he's very boring. Oh, right. He isn't affectionate and never initiates sex. I just can tell if he goes in a mood and, he haven't, and we haven't done it for a few days. I had spoken many times about this to him at kitchen table and then he will be affectionate yet he doesn't the day after please please what can I do because the only time he can't be in a mood with me is when I'm on my period please help right I don't understand this so right so he's got a high sex drive but he never initiates sex and he's not affectionate but he's in a mood if you won't have sex with him. But he'll only let you have a day off when you're on your period. I don't understand what you're saying yet. He doesn't. Right, so you've sat him down at the kitchen table and said, I don't want to have sex as much as we're having sex because it's a bit boring because you're not affectionate. And then he said, oh, right, okay, I'll be affectionate then. So then he is affectionate just for a day. And then he wants sex again day after, but there's no affection. And then when you're on your period, he's not bothered. Well, that's fucking blown my fucking mind completely. Because I don't know what the fucking question is. What are you actually asking? You don't want as much sex. You want quant quality over quantity. Is that what you're asking me to tell you what you mean? Because you don't know what you mean. Because no, no, none of us know what you mean, flower. Let me fucking tell you now. So he's got a high sex drive and he wants lots of sex. And that's okay. You've said that's okay. But you prefer more affection. So what you're saying is it's quantity. No, quality over quantity. So rather than him just jumping on two pumps and a squirt and fucking off and leaving you at wet patch, you prefer like a little bit of a kiss and a bit of a tickle on your ear and your neck and a few tweaks at nips and a bit of a feed in the donkey and uh, you know before he slips it in and that's what I would say to him you know I, I'm bored with it. it's boring can we try something else just tell him just tell him that you know the, the, the quantity of sex is fuck all compared to quality of sex I'd rather have a right good fucking sex session and not bother again for a little bit you know, let your fanny lie down a bit, you know, like um, everything go down. Because, like, when you have a right good session, you can't fucking walk for days, can you? You're like John Wayne. And you sit down and you're like, oh, where's that bag of frozen peas? Yeah, just tell him. Just say, listen, I'm not fucking doing it with you because you're boring. So I'm not having sex with you. You're boring. I'd rather go to the bathroom and have a fucking Kit Kat. Fuck off. Go and have a wank. Tell him. Just fucking tell him to go and have a wank. Throw don't throw, we don't throw things at people. Pass him a box of Kleenex and say, there's you, point. Put it on his phone and fuck him off to the toilet. Yeah? Okie dokie. I think that's what she meant. I don't know what she meant. So when you write into Nighttime with Nelly with a, a problem, it's always best to like tell me what the problem is and then I can sort of answer it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have been in a toxic, abusive relationship for 13 years. 13 is my lucky number. I am talking to another man who I believe is the love of my life. 
However, I am completely terrified about leaving my current partner due to the circumstances. I don't have any family for me to go to. The house is both ours and I do not have it in me to get him to leave. What should I do? Well, you could stop. You could start by stopping being a cheating little cunt. All right. Because you're in love with another man and you scre you, you, you chat into another man, whether it be online or in real life or whatever. And the only reason you're not fucking leaving is because you've nowhere to fucking go to. This fella you're chatting to, has he not said come and fucking live with me? Eh? Bring your cheating little dirty ass over to me and live with me. Has he not said that? No, and do you know why? Because he probably thinks, I don't want you to cheat on me. Because once a cheat, always a cheat. So you need to decide, Flower, what you fucking want. Do you want to stop with your partner and sort your shit out? Because you won't be cheating with somebody else if you were happy. So sort it out at home. What are the problems at home? Why are you looking elsewhere? If you don't want to do that, then fucking pack your bags and off your fuck down to the council and get yourself a little flat. Because it's not fair to your partner. If you're not communicating with him because you're too busy communicating with fucking love of your life, why is the no love of your life not asking you to fucking pack your bags and fuck off to him? Maybe you're not the love of his life, eh? Maybe you've got yourself all in a tiz, all infatuated with something that doesn't even fucking exist and you're using all your energy on something that isn't even real, it's virtual, rather than sitting down at the kitchen table with your partner and saying... Listen, we need to sort our relationship out because my love for you is fading. I feel like my attention is elsewhere. And if he says, what do you mean, say, I've been talking to somebody saying, no, nothing's happened, be honest, or whether it has, I don't know, because you don't say. But I'm being serious. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm, you know, I, our love's not right. I'm not feeling happy. I'm not feeling our relationship's healthy. Can we talk about it? Because if not, then you will properly cheat, won't you? So, but already you're cheating because you're in love with somebody else, aren't you? So, and why should your partner have to move out when you're the cheating cunt? And why should your partner think your relationship's right? You're having your fucking cake and eat it. No. Can't condone it. Don't like it. Won't advise you to do anything else other than come clean to your partner, either sort your shit out at all or pack your shit and fuck off. To the love of your life. Yeah, that's it. Don't like it, never will, never have. If my eyes, I'm a happily engaged lady, but if my eyes started going here, there and everywhere, I'd, I'd be thinking, why am I doing this? What's wrong? What, what am I missing? What am I missing? Because we can all find people attractive. I can say to my partner, fuck me, look at him, he's well fit. Don't mean to say I'm going to go jump on his cock. Absolutely not. But if I actually thought he were well fit and then wanted to jump on his cock, there's a problem, isn't there? There's a problem. And the problem is usually what's missing at home? What's not ticking your boxes? Why is your love tank empty? Work on that first. Dear Auntie Nelly, thank you for being you. Oh, you're so welcome. Lots of people are not thankful of me, but thank you. Please can I be anonymous? All nighttime and Ellie's and Sunday services are always anonymous. No, she was in a, a toxic and abusive relationship 13 years ago, Hannah. Not now. 13 years ago. And she left him. And now she's with somebody else and she's talking to another man. So if I didn't read that out properly, my sweetheart, I apologise. But what had she have been still in a toxic and abusive relationship, my response would have been a little bit different. Okay, thank you for pulling me up on that though. Okay, dokie. So, thank you for being you. You're very welcome. Not everybody likes that, but there you go. Okay. I met my partner within a couple of weeks of dating. I became very unwell. My partner, despite, despite only being together for five weeks, stuck by me and ended up being in a more caring role. Due to my illness, I have no sex drive and I, our relationship does have no intimacy. I would love it too. I just have some complex issues around it. My problem is I feel guilty and like he deserves someone can be better. Am I being selfish staying with him? Or should I let him go so he can be treated the way he deserves? Eh, sweetheart. So, you became ill. You started seeing somebody, everything was fine. Five weeks later, you became ill. And you're now feeling... Um, 
like he's a carer and when somebody steps into a caring role, it takes out the romance, the passion, the desire, the attraction. If he didn't want to be with you, number one, he wouldn't be with you, sweetheart. He wouldn't be with you. He'd have said to you after five weeks one day, he'd have said, listen, love, I'm really sorry this has happened to you, but, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do. Let me know. And he'd have fucked off, but he hasn't because he right likes you. And there's something there that he sees in you that keeps him there every fucking day. So what do we do when we've got a disability and with our partner and our partner's in a caring role? We may not be able to swing off fucking chandeliers or jump off wardrobe, but who does? Who does? Nobody does. That's not life. And there are times in life where one has to step in as the carer. One has to. You know, because your other partner may be feeling poorly. They may be down with mental health issues. They may be grieving. There's lots of things. They may have lost the job. There's lots of times where our partner steps up as a support and caring role rather than that, look at me tonight. I've got my tit tassels on. Come and chase me. It's not all about that. And you've had a bit of a rough ride because rather than doing the raw man's thing, the butterflies in the tummy, you've been poorly and he stepped into the caring role. So why don't you start doing little bits of things like maybe having a meal one night, lighting a candle, lying in bed and just kissing and talking and caressing. There's lots of things you can still do without having to swing from fucking chandeliers. It's not all about penetration. Penetration's brilliant. I love it. Stick as many things in me as you want, as big as you can. But, <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> enough information about your Auntie Nelly and what she can fit in there. <clears throat> I'd give fucking Sticky Vicky a run for a fucking money. Um, it's about being together in a relationship. So when you've done the caring thing, so like you might have made you your breakfast, made you your tea, um, whatever it is in a caring role that he's doing for you, when that's done and dusted and you've got your downtime, that's your time to be a couple, whether it be kissing, caressing, stroking, you know, holding hands, laying down in bed and you lying in his arms or, you know, telling him how much you appreciate him. Speak about things about like couples do rather than, have you had your meds? Is it time for this? Come on, it's time for that. So stop that caring. Once you're in bed, it's your downtime. Once you're downstairs, it's on settee, it's your downtime. You go to being a couple and you do what couples do to the best of your ability. If he didn't want to be with your sweetheart, he wouldn't. And at the end of the day, if you think he deserves better and you're going to start giving off the vibes that he deserves better, then he's going to fuck off and find something better because he's going to think you don't want him. So do not push him away absolutely do not push him away embrace the fact that he's absolutely wanting to be stuck by your side because there's a fucking lot that wouldn't there's a lot that would fuck off the bolt at first fucking hurdle believe me so when it's your downtime introduce couple time and tell him that you want him you desire him you want to be in that kind of relationship for all you know he might be dying to hold you in his arms and kiss you and cuddle you but he might think She's not very well, so I don't want to push her. She's not very well, so, you know, I'm okay with things as they are. And, you know, I'm happy to just um, go off to the toilet with a bo uh, box of Kleenex now and again. You know, let him know how it's making you feel and that you want to be intimate. You want that kind of relationship. Okay, there's nothing wrong with being in a relationship where one takes on a caring role because at some time in our life that will happen to each and every one of us and God only, only can I ask please that we all have that one somebody by our side taking care of us. There we go. I have been dating a lad for the past few weeks, Auntie Nelly, and I really like him but I found out he cheated on his wife with a babysitter. He has a child age nine. But he told me yesterday morning he just wants a rebound now with me and said he can come to mine and talk to me. I am heartbroken. My friend did warn me though and said it only ended up in tears after what he's did to his wife and now he's going to do it to me. Should I give him a chance if he asks for another talk? I really like him. He looks like Ross from Suits. Hey, the fuck are we doing here now? I've been dating a lad for the past few weeks. I really like him. I found out he cheated on his wife. And now he cheated on me with the babysitter. Ah, he's cheated already on you. 
And then he said, well, that was just a rebound. Who, you are the babysitter because he cheated on his wife with you. And now he's che And he looks like Ross from Suits. And you've fallen in for him fast. Now you're heartbroken. Should you give him another chance? <clears throat> Everybody makes mistakes. But he's cheated on his wife. Now he's cheated on you with babysitter. Is he then going to cheat up babysitter with somebody else? Sounds to me like he does a bit of cheating, this guy. Sounds to me like this guy likes to have his cake and fucking eat it. You're already heartbroken and he's kind of already cheated, hasn't he? I think he has cheated on his wife with babysitter. No, he's cheated on his wife with you and then you got a babysitter and then he's cheated with babysitter. So he likes doing a bit of cheating. So when he said, I, I just did it because I'm on rebound, that's the bit I don't get. Is he on rebound with you from his wife or with you with babysitter? Yeah. So um, once you write in tonight, Terminelli, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. But you've got to actually tell me what the dear Antonelli is in order for me to sort of answer it. Because um, <clears throat> I'm not septic peg. I have no idea what that is. But what I will advise is, once a cheat, always a cheat. I ain't saying that the minority out there, there is one or two out there, they've made a mistake, they don't cheat again, they learn from the mistakes, sort the relationships problems out, they go for marriage guidance, whatever it may fucking be. But he's cheating on wife, he's cheating on you, he's cheating on fucking babysitter. Who is this fucking Don Duan DeMarco? Fuck him off. There's the door. Hashtag fucking bye Felicia. Fall off your fuck. No, you're right, broken, because he looks like Ross from Suits. I don't even watch Suits, and I don't even know who Ross is. The only Ross I know is Ross in Friends and fucking Ross Kemp. And neither of them have fucking keep me up at night. No, thank you. Dear Auntie Nelly, I'd love my wife to grab me and drag me to bed for sex, but it never happens. If I didn't make the first move, would she ever even bother? When we do have sex, it tends to be just one missionary position. I am more adventurous than her, I think. We are only 35. We've been together for six years, but she's embarrassed about talking about it. And then starts crying and says, why are you not happy? Apart from this, I am, but what can I do? <clears throat> six years you've been together and you've only ever had missionary sex, but you married her. So you knew what you were getting, didn't you? You knew what you were getting. She's not that into it. Maybe she's not that adventurous. Maybe she doesn't feel that confident. Maybe the fact that you're saying to her, fucking hell, we only ever have missionary sex. Can we, not, can we not do it like from behind? Can we not do this? Can we not do that? It's sometimes it's how we communicate things to our partners, okay? So I think you need to probably start right back at the beginning and romance her a bit again. Make her feel wonderful. Um, make her feel like uh, you really, really find her attractive. You find her sexually attractive. She really turns you on. Romance her. Do the candles. Do the flowers. Do the romantic meal. Do the kissing. Do the licking of the ear. Do the caressing. You know, and when you are making love to her, maybe she thinks that's fine and thinks, why is he not happy? I'm doing everything I should do. Maybe she doesn't really understand that there are other positions. Some people just don't know about, you know, doggy style or fucking tromboning or fucking whatever it may be, fucking reverse cowgirl. Not everybody knows stuff like that. So it's about enjoying these things together and it's about letting her know that it's not dirty and it's about letting her know that you only want to do them with her because you find her the love of your life. You're in love with her. She's your wife and... It's not that you're bored with sex. It's just that you could be having so much more fun. So maybe one night, why don't you just perform foreplay on your wife rather than penetrate her? Why don't you just do lots of foreplay and let her see that it can be so enjoyable, sex? It's not a dirty thing. It's not a taboo thing. Uh, there's lots of things that can be done. And slowly, slowly, she then may start doing things to you and, you know gradually these things can happen gradually but you need to tell her that you are happy i am so happy and i love you so much and i fancy you so much when i'm in bed with you i love looking into your eyes maybe finish on mission race start something else but it sounds to me like you're saying you're bored because it's got boring 
and it's a habit and you may be as guilty of that as she is. So go back to basics, date nights again, maybe start off with a bit of foreplay and don't have penetration until you've really built up to it. It might not be until like the fourth or fifth date night, do you know what I mean? But yeah, introduce her slowly to other things and always make sure that she's comfortable and happy with what you're doing. Flower pots, that's been tonight's night time with Nelly. And I don't know if you've enjoyed that as much as I have, but I fucking have. I absolutely thought tonight were brilliant. It's not been a nightmare at all, has it? So the trolls that said, nobody wants nightmare with Nelly, off you fuck, hashtag bye Felicia. I've really enjoyed tonight's Nighttime with Nelly. Should you want to feature one of your dear Auntie Nellies on Nighttime with Nelly, then please keep writing into the page. If you want it for Sunday service, please keep writing into the page because if there's no dear Auntie Nellies, then there's no live shows. So I hope to be back with you on Sunday for Sunday service and in between, I'll give you a few reviews. What do you think about that? Because review is what I do. I buy and try so you don't have to. Please give me a like, give me a love, share this video and I'll see you all very, very soon. Good night and God bless.